Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Render Man tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about color and color management and um, how you can match the color that you might be getting out of another piece of software for colors for texture like Photoshop with your material colors in Render Man or any other renderer for that example, for that matter. But in this example, we're talking about Render Man. Now, uh, this has to do with linear workflow and I'll talk about that a little bit. But uh, basically what we're doing here is just trying to get all the colors to match. So when we get to the final render, they all look like they're at the correct exposure. I know a lot of you reach out to me and say, hey, my work is underexposed when I render it. This is for you. So we need to make sure that our colors are going to be the same. So we're going to just assign a surface shader to start with on our left one. And we'll call this cube left. And um, I've already got a color picked out here in Photoshop. This lovely blue color. And these are the values. We're going to use the RGB colors. So it's going to be 72, 89, and 171. And we're going to go to uh, make sure our color picking is set to RGB 255. And then what we can do here is type in 72 89 and 171 and we get the same blue um, now interestingly if you have it set to dis uh, rendering space you'll see it automatically changes those values if we try and input the initial values again you'll see that that color is much more washed out compared to our photoshop version you can see the difference there it's because in rendering space it's linear and we're looking at the color and display space so it's kind of confusing to think about here it's kind of a little bit abstract but we'll go back to display space which is how we picked this color so essentially what we're saying here is this is a non-linearized color and um, by looking at it in display space and it's fine to use it here because we know that these are the values that we want based on this color that we created in Photoshop so when we do a render it should look correct and if we have a look at Photoshop and it, we're pretty confident that that is the same color. So that is fine. Now, if I save this color out as a JPEG, which I've already done, and I've called it random color, and then assign it to our right-hand cube by selecting the cube, adding a pixel surface, jumping into the HyperShade editor, and we'll call this cube right and now we know the cube right is going to be the surface with a pixel texture assigned to it so we're just going to use pixel texture we'll run that rgb into the diffuse color and then we'll open up the random color okay so then if we run the render again you'll see that this color on the right is actually not the correct exposure now it looks as if the other one did when it was in the linear space that's because the texture has not been linearized in the pixel texture node so if we linearize that there you go so basically our goal here is to make sure that everything that we're working with is in the same texture space which is linear um, another texture space that you can use is aces i'm not going to cover aces here but that's actually something that i'm going to look into in the future for render man now some texture editing software will allow you to export your textures as linear files uh, often will be a tiff or even in exr uh, which is fine so if you're doing that you can open those and you do not need to linearize um, also make sure that your color management is not overriding anything so for an exr for example it should be color input space raw um, and dot text and hdr files should also be raw default will be sigb which is fine okay so now when it comes to rendering um, you should be batch rendering your renders if you are doing a final render but if you are using the Ed Previewer and you did want to export your file one way to do it would be to export your file like so I'm just going to chuck this on the desktop and then if we open this up Photoshop we get these dark cubes which are definitely not the same exposure that we had and that's because they are being opened up with a linear curve um, whereas they need to have an sRGB curve so what we can do here is burn in mapping on save which will just mean it will display exactly like you're seeing here and then export it again and there you go so now our cubes are the same value and hue as that blue that we expected it to be when you're rendering out using batch rendering you should be rendering out as an EXR and that will be under your AOVs I cover this in the batch rendering tutorial but I'll mention again your display type should be EXR I wouldn't recommend using any other file type 
it's just going to cause confusion when you're getting into the compositing stage stage and the um, and the final stages of putting your your renders together it's easiest to export it as an exr which is going to be a linear color range which will allow you much more control over your renders in post which is why we don't use e uh, jpegs because they're only 8-bit so it's a small color range compared to exr which is 32-bit as far as handling exr files a lot of people tell me they're using photoshop i'm going to categorically say it here photoshop is terrible for using uh, for looking at exrs don't use it learn a proper compositing software um, nuke would be the best one uh, the, the industry standard there is a free educational version that you can use and you can use it for your reels and all that sort of stuff so make sure you're looking at that best way to re run read your exrs if you're doing stuff professionally and you can't afford nuke use something like fusion which is also free which will allow you to do your compositing just the same as nuke it's uh, a little bit lesser well no uh, lesser used so the documentation is a little bit not as well serviced um, but I use fusion myself and I think it's absolutely fine alternative to nuke if you've got any questions let me know in the comments below I'll try and help you guys out because um, I know this stuff can be quite confusing generally I would try and make all your textures just linear from the start that way as you get through to the end you'll be able to color match everything correctly and you're not going to run into any confusion rather than mixing and maxing uh, matching jpegs coming into your um, as your textures and you know then tiffs and targets and all other sorts of stuff just keep all your file formats the same coming in then you know that it's all linear inside maya and renderman or, and whatever software you might be using and then as you get out it'll be linear again and it can be a an SRGB curve can be applied to it in your compositing software like Nuke or whatever then you'll be able to view it correctly. That's it for this tutorial if you found it useful make sure you leave a like so other people can find it and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord and more by clicking the link below.